You are a 16-year-old youngling in the Jedi Temple during the Jedi Purge or more commonly known as Order 66. This video will cover all the decisions you would have to do to survive and continue the battle against the Empire. Let's say you're with your master on an upper floor of the temple. It doesn't really matter. I guess for storytelling's sake, let's say you're meditating. After the 501st Legion, led by Darth Vader, enters the temple, you hear the battle commencing downstairs, and being the responsible adult that your master is, they tell you to wait here while they check to see what's happening. After all, it's not like you're a child soldier or anything. After your master doesn't come back, you slowly head downstairs and you are shocked to see what's happening. You see hundreds of clones mowing down your fellow Jedi and even High Council members. After you spot your master lying unmoving on the ground some distance away, you rush to their side to find several blaster shots in their body. You quickly come up with a game plan. Your Jedi teachings instruct you to preserve peace, but you know you can't do that if you die. And after you see masters you thought were undefeated fall by the hands of the clones, you realize that you never stand a chance against them. In many stories, it describes secret tunnels under the temple that lead to the underworld of Coruscant through the sewers. You decide that's your only hope of escape as you know the clones will have barricaded the other exits. After you sneak into the lower chambers, you eventually find the entrance to the tunnels. After you try travel through the tunnels, you use your training in the forest to try to detect the exit, and after some dead ends, you finally make it out into a market. You quickly use the relatively small amount of credits you have to buy a cloak to conceal your Jedi clothes. The Jedi gave their members a small allowance to pay for necessities like this, and if you don't have credits on you, well, just steal a cloak. The Jedi are prone to manipulate and steal in the name of peace. As you desperately want to know why the clones turned on the Jedi, you know that the streets will be searched for any escaped Jedi as soon as possible. You know that you have to get off-world and wait for things to die down a bit. You find public transport off the planet and knowing that you can't pay for it, you use a mind trick on the ship's pilot to get him to take you off-world. And you tell yourself that the Jedi have probably helped him in the past and he owes the Jedi a favor, so you don't feel bad about using him for his ship. You plan on heading to Empress Teta, a large planet close to Coruscant. You deconstruct your lightsaber and hide the pieces in your cloak. As soon as you arrive, you buy or steal a cheap blaster and use another mind trick to get yourself a fake identity card. You see on the Holonet news what happened. The news broadcaster is saying that the Jedi are traitors and the Republic is forming into the Empire. You have no way of knowing what this means and want to find out more. You wouldn't have received the message from Obi-Wan Kenobi warning the Jedi off of Coruscant as you don't have that communicator device. The only logical conclusion that you can come to is this must have something to do with the cloning process. It makes no sense that clones who have fought with the Jedi for three years would suddenly betray them. I know it sounds like I'm making decisions based on things we as an audience know but these characters don't, but come on, what other conclusion would you come to? You can either do two things from here, live out your life on this planet or another one and not worry about the Empire again, or do what a true Jedi would do and keep the peace. Let's say you do the latter. After some months, you decide that things have cooled down on Coruscant to some degree. Security is tight, but you can get through because of your fake ID. Knowing that you are more than a match for one clone trooper if you catch him off guard, you wait for an opportunity to ambush one by using the force choke and taking his armor. After joining back with the trooper's battalion, you eventually head back to the temple, which is now known as the Imperial Palace. And after seeing the scale of the newly formed empire, you realize you aren't a match for it alone. Since from this point it would be 15 years before the rebellion is formed, that isn't an option. Again, you are faced with the same question, live the rest of your life in solitude somewhere on another world, or stay and fight the hopeless fight. For the sake of keeping this video interesting, let's say you go with the second option again. You realize that the best place to fight this battle is right in the center of it. You reluctantly abandon your lightsaber, the only thing that links you to the Jedi. And over the next year or two, you gain power and influence through the high ends of society on Coruscant through force manipulation, mind tricks, and business deals. Due to your unique abilities, you can easily take control of the markets and other valuable resources. Using this, you can buy yourself into the higher end of the Empire, because how else are you going to attack the Empire to the fullest extent? You have to be part of the system to change the system, or in your case, destroy it. You can feed false information to the Empire by mind tricking your fellow officers to say it for you. And after Thrawn or Darth Vader find out those officers lied, they would be executed. You keep doing this and by by the time the rebellion rolls around, you can give them tips about the Empire's plans. You were also able to keep undetected by using your force powers to conceal yourself in case Darth Vader or another force sensitive comes into contact with you. You have a very valuable position in altering the course of the war. You could potentially prevent countless deaths. And in the end, it doesn't really matter what happens to you. Let's say you died on either the first or second Death Star. You prevented or vastly shortened the war. And if a Jedi would be willing to sacrifice themselves to save others, surely you could find it in yourself to save the galaxy from oppression. Of course, there are other ways Jedi could survive Order 6. 66, and many have, but of course just surviving Order 66 is easier than preventing the entire course of the war. There are several Jedi who live their life in solitude but aren't very discreet about the fact that they're Jedi. They are usually hunted down by Vader and his Inquisitors. Anyways, let me know how you would beat Order 66 in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, feel free to subscribe and drop a like. But until next time, thanks for watching and may the Force be with you.